You've lost, evildoer. None can withstand the power of my epic Hamilton parody song. Theater kids win again. Oh, it was too epic. Your wordplay, too quirky. At least let me know the name of the person who vanquished me. Oh, uh, um, my name's Albert. Albert? <laughs> Fine, what if I, um, what if I go by a luber? <laughs> That's even worse! Like Jiffy Lube? <laughs> Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. This format is still in its infancy, nubile, unsolved, and of course, full of people jamming the 60 most powerful legal cards in a deck and calling it a day. But one deck threatens to disturb that balance, and no, it's not Earth Machine. Presenting Branded. The March of the Theater Kids. So here's the list, and apologies to the Fluffle community, but I am not playing the patchwork version. Why? Because it's ass. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the pack opening website that everyone's using for their progression series, is, but you might have missed, it's also got a deck builder, a card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. I personally use it to post the Chalice Line monthly deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. With that, let's bust into Branded. Branded is actually two archetypes, Despia and Branded. The only archetype from Dawn of Majesty that Konami didn't forget about, these theater kids are just about as annoying as their real-life counterparts. Thank god these cards aren't scratch and sniff. Anyway, these future baristas all facilitate fusion summons, specifically two or three really powerful dragon monsters that are all made with Fallen of Albaz. For a long time this deck was relegated to backstage. It could top, provided Pack or Vlad played it, but for room temperature IQ players like me, it was more chaff lost in the wave of the pile meta. But Konami has a trick up their sleeve for when a deck is underperforming, give it a single broken piece of support. That support for Branded came in the form of Branded Fusion, a new release in their structure deck. This is a fusion spell, but wait, it's actually got a really cool, interesting, never before seen twist. Something special and innovative and yeah, it's just shit all fusion. Turns out this, plus two new dragons actually worth making, was enough to make the archetype meta viable, and depending on who you're talking to, tier zero. I have my own reservations about how much this deck will dominate the format, but it's definitely expected to be good. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, to a Luber, the Boober of Duber. If this card is normal or special, you get to add a branded spell trap from your deck to your hand, and if a face-up fusion monster you control is destroyed by battle or leaves a field because of an opponent's card effect while it's in your graveyard, you can target an effect monster your opponent controls, special summon this card, and if you do, negate the targeted monster's effects. After that, we've got two copies of Despian Tragedy. If it's sent to the graveyard or banished by a card effect, you can add a Despia from your deck to your hand, and you can banish it from the graveyard to reset a branded spell trap. We've got two copies of Fallen of Albaz. This card is not fantastic, but does come up. More importantly, it is necessary for all of our fusions. We're playing one copy of Adlibetum of Despia. This increases the ceiling on your plays, and it is endlessly searchable, so we only really need the one. And then the Destiny Heroes, Celestial, and Dasher. After that is the Adventure Engine, three Water Enchantress and one Wandering Griffin Rider, followed by Hand Traps, three Ash, two Ghost Ogre, three Valor, two Nibiru. Following that, we've got our spell cards, three copies of Branded Fusion. This card allows you to fusion summon a monster that includes Fallen of Albaz's material from your extra deck using monsters from your hand, deck, or field as fusion material. And importantly, the turn that you activate this card, you can't summon anything from the extra deck except for fusion monsters. Speaking of cards with that restriction, we've got three copies of Branded Opening, which allows you to discard a card, take a Despia monster from your deck, and add it to your hand or special summon it. Just like last time, you can't summon except for fusion monsters, and you can banish it from the graveyard to protect one of your fusion monsters from being destroyed by card effect. After that, we've got two copies of Branded in Red. This card allows you to target a Despia or a Fallen of Albaz in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then fusion summon a level eight or higher fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing the materials listed on it from your hand or field. Now importantly that's a conditional then, so if you don't return the card you can't fusion summon. We've got three copies of Rite of Aramisia, a copy of Fateful Adventure, and a Draco back the Rideable Dragon. After that we've just got DPE stuff to Fusion Destiny, a Foolish Burial which can send either the Despian Tragedy or the Water Enchantress, and a Called by the Grave. In the extra we've got two Guardian Chimera, this card is fantastic, has to be fusion summoned with three monsters that all have different names 
games, and it has to have one monster from each place, uh, your hand and field. If it's fusion summoned by a spell card or effect, you get to draw cards equal to the number of cards used as a material from the hand, and then destroy cards your opponent controls equal to the number of cards used as a material from the field. After that, we've got two copies of Mirror Jade. This is another really powerful card that they got in the new structure deck. You can only have one of them, and once per turn, you can send a fusion monster that lists Fallen of Albaz as material from your extra deck to the graveyard to banish a monster on the field, but you can't activate this effect again next turn. If this fusion summon card leaves the field by your opponent's effect, you can also destroy all monsters your opponent controls during the end phase of this turn. It's kind of like absolute zero. We've got Pride of Planet Dragus Topelia, just for its silly Albaz stuff. Uh, two copies of Lubelion, the Searing Dragon. If it's fusion summoned, you just get to fusion summon again. Uh, we've got a copy of Despian Corteris. This comes up. One DPE. One Masquerade, the Blazing Dragon. This is Chain Energy. Two copies of Albion, the Branded Dragon, which if it's fusion summoned, allows you to fusion summon a level eight or lower fusion monster from your extra deck, just like the Searing by banishing fusion materials listed from your hand, field, or grave graveyard and allows you to set a branded spell trap if it is in your graveyard from being sent there this turn. We are playing some link monsters just in case one Verte Anaconda, one link spider to link off Nibiru tokens and a link Karibo. One more thing before we jump into the games. I didn't want to profile for a deck this hype to be marred by my own insufficient play and because I didn't feel up to snuff in terms of both the combos and navigating turns three and beyond with this deck in time for the 10 minute testing, friend of the show Aki was able to jump in and play the games against me for this episode. Thank you so much Aki. Let's see it in action. Because we know this deck is going to be strong, I want to spend the first couple of replays exploring scenarios and matchups in which it looks weak. Our first match is up against Live Twin, and we are going first with a decent hand. We'll begin with a copy of Foolish Burial, prioritizing the Despian Tragedy here over the Adventure Line. We'll go ahead and get a copy of Ad Libidum to hand before we normal summon an Aluber, and let's go Alubing! There's the Branded Fusion, which we'll use to summon a copy of Lubellion. We're going to pitch a copy of Albaz, and then use its effect to go into Mirror Jade. We'll set the red and pass back to our opponent with material in our hand. They'll begin with a copy of Live Twin Leela and activate the effect to summon a Kiss a Kill from deck. From here, they're going to link summon a copy of Leela, use the effect of Leela to bring back the Kiss a Kill, go into Kiss a Kill, go into Leela, and and at this point, we're going to trigger the effect of the Mirror Jade. We're going to destroy this copy of Kissakill. Uh, they're going to triple tactics talents at resolution. We can stem the bleeding with the branded in red, but that conditional then is going to come into play when they called by the Grave Us. Oh my goodness. They'll go for a live twin entrance afterwards, which allows them to link our Mirror Jade off for a Leela and then end on a Trouble Sunny. Not ideal. They'll set one card and pass back to us. We'll go for Albion at end step to reset a branded fusion. We should be able to do it from this position. Oh, that's a great draw. We're going to activate Water Enchantress to get a copy of Rite of Aramisir. They're going to activate Frost and Grave and draw an Ash Blossom off the top. Are you kidding me? All right, we're going to go for the Fateful Adventure here. We're going to activate the Branded Fusion, and unsurprisingly, there's the Ash Blossom. Okay, we can still Fateful the hard way. They will go for the Trouble Sunny here, bringing back Leela and Kissakill. We can go ahead and equip the Draco back here, but they can pop our token in response and draw an additional card. Things are looking particularly bad. We'll set one card and pass back to our opponent, and hopefully they don't have Lethal here. They'll go for Trouble Sunny, sending off the big Lesbian to Grave. They will eat our entire board, link it to another copy of Trouble Sunny, and then from this position, Normal summon a Leela, special summon a Kissakill Frost, go from Leela into Kissakill, and then send those to the graveyard at the end of this chain to bring out a 4400 attack point Kissakill Leela. Rough. Our second match is up against Fluanderese, and it really showcases the utility of a specific monster in our extra deck. This Draco back is glued to our opener, but thankfully so is Branded Fusion. We'll go ahead and fire off the ladder. We're going to summon from our extra deck, surprise, surprise, a copy of Lubellion. We're going to trigger the effect of the tragedy this time in order to get an Aluber to hand. We are Alubing out here! And then afterwards, we'll go into Mirror Jade, activate the effect of Aluber, get a Branded in red. We aim to activate one on our turn and one on our opponents. We'll go into a Masquerade the Blazing Dragon. It turns out Chain Energy, functionally an FTK versus Fluanderese. They're going to begin with an Advent of Adventure. This hand is not looking fantastic for them. They're going to go ahead and Book of Moon our last remaining point of interaction, so we're going to have to flex this branded in red really cleverly over the course of this turn. We'll go from Rabina into a copy of Simorg Bird of Perfection, and while this does chain block, it also does a ton of damage to them. They're going to go Eaglen into a second effect of the Simorg Bird of Perfection in order to add Elbors to hand, followed by a Reza, which they will then summon. They have to use the Reza really prematurely, prioritizing it over the copy of Mpen, just because they'll burn out. We can stem the bleeding again with Branded in red, but not called by again. Come on! All right, there goes our entire field, but we're still in a really commanding position. They'll attack over for 331, and then at end step, we can trigger the effect of the Albion in order to reset this copy of Branded Fusion. We'll draw for turn, and... 
That's a really good one. We'll begin with the Branded Fusion in order to get out a copy of Albion. Then we'll trigger the effect of the Albion in order to fusion summon a copy of Corteris. All we have to do is 31, and Corteris is perfect for that. Afterwards, we're going to go for the opening, and they will Dreaming Town. Oh, God, that's like the worst thing that they could have. They'll go from Rabina into Eaglin. They're going to normal summon the Eaglin, trigger the effect, and we have to Corteris here because they're just going to get M-Pen and we'll lose it afterwards. They're going to go for the M-Pen, but unfortunately, the Dreaming Town Graveyard effect will prevent us from attacking in with the Corteris, so we can no longer get in for lethal, and we have lost control of this game. And now that the bad beats are out of the way, it's time for a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Cybers Eldlich, though you'd be forgiven for not knowing it based on that opener. Our hand is strange. You really don't want to see Nibiru in the opener, but doing so means that it's maybe worth going for a low investment play rather than some super explosive combo that loses to hand traps. You can see our opponent has two. We'll go for Aramisir here in order to get a copy of the Adventurer token, then fire off the Fateful Adventure to get a Wandering Griffin Rider. We're doing it this way so we can actually pitch the Despian Tragedy and trigger the effect for an Aluber. I think it might be best to actually just go Verte Anaconda here. We'll fire the effect. They will affect Valor. And I have no problem passing with a hand that includes an Ibiru and Effect Failer. Our opponent draws for turn, and, well, that's a good one, but nothing they didn't already have. They're going to begin with a Water Enchantress, then fire off this copy of Aramis here to get a token. Afterwards, they will set a Fateful Adventure and activate Magician's Souls. That could be really, really bad. Oh, no. They'll go for Fateful Adventure to get a copy of Draco back, and then fire it again in order to get a copy of Wandering Griffin Rider. They're going to go Draco back and then Chain Griffin Rider, at which point they will activate the effect of their copy of Magician's Souls. They're going to draw two cards, and thankfully that's not any anything too scary. They'll normal summon another Magician Souls to go into Verte, and there is the Nibiru, there is the Griffin Rider, and there is the Effect Veiler. Look at that. We wiped the board, and we can absolutely decimate them on the crackback. Two set isn't going to be sufficient. We draw a Veiler off the top. We're going to begin with the Tragedy Effect in Graveyard to reset this copy of Fusion. We'll normal summon the Aluber and get a Lubing. Ah, it's going to get infipped, but not too big of a deal here. We can activate the Branded Fusion in order to go into a Lubellion, then trigger the effect of the Lubellion. While it can't attack, this Mirror Jade certainly can. We'll go to Combat, trigger the effect of the Mirror Jade to get rid of that token and then dome them for 3k 1800 and 3k oh nope there's the conquistador but oh that's the imperm column enjoy your useless conquistador fool we'll set this copy branded in red and then fire it at our earliest convenience so we can go into a copy of masquerade and prevent them from activating any effects for the remainder of the game see you in game two buddy so it's time for game two and well, what do you want me to do against two Solemn Judgment on the draw? Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of Firewall Guardian, which does do the combo. They'll go Link Disciple into the effect of the Firewall Guardian into a Devotee. They'll trigger the effect of the Devotee, then the effect of Disciple. Cycle a card from their hand, then use the effect of the Devotee to summon two tokens to their side of the field. From here, they can make... <gasps> Tagda! Well, that's so... Afterwards, they're going to go for a Magician's Souls, and then they will summon a copy of Verti Anaconda. They're going to fire the effect here in order to send a Fusion Destiny to the graveyard, and down comes DPE. Afterwards, they'll activate the effect of the Magician's Souls, chain the effect of the Scarlet Sanguine so they don't draw a Conquistador, then draw a card, set three, and at end step, trigger the effect of the DPE, popping the Conquistador so they can trigger the effect of the graveyard to go back into an Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine. We'll draw for turn, and that's not bad. We're going to begin with a copy of Fateful Adventure. We'll normal summon an Aluber, and I mean, what do you want me to do about that? We'll go for the Fateful Adventure. They will DPE here, popping both the Fateful Adventure and the Scythe. They'll trigger the Scythe in the graveyard. I'm holding this called by the grave because we're not fusion summoning anyway. When we go to end step, it's destroyed by fusion destiny's effect. We have the called by, but the second solemn judgment. Okay, we just have to survive this turn. They're really low. We can do it if we resolve the effect of the Aluber. They're going to go at end step four as Scarlet Sanguine into an Eldritch the Golden Lord, and we just have to prevent a little more damage from hitting field. They'll go for Celestial, we'll Ash Blossom, and... I mean, sometimes they just have everything. I, what, what do you really want me to do here? They're going to draw a couple of cards, including a Cybers gadget, and that is all she wrote. Okay, see you in game three. So it's time for that all-important game three, and <laughs> this is like the best hand we've opened all video. <laughs> All right, I mean, we'll begin with a copy of Branded Opening. We're going to pitch this copy of Water Enchantress. Wow, neat that that can work. Uh, we'll go for the Aluber next. We'll get a copy of Branded in red before activating the Enchantress to get a Rite of Aramisir. We're going to fire that bad boy off to get a token and a Faithful Adventure to our face-up spell and trap card zone. Then activate Branded Fusion to go into an Albion in a way that is chain-blocked by the Faithful Adventure. Wonderful how it does that. We'll add a copy of Draco back to hand and then go into a copy of Mirror Jade. We'll fire off an FD to make a DPE. And from here, we can fire off the Faithful Adventure to get ourselves a copy of Wandering Griffin Rider. We'll equip that Draco back, set one card, and DPE at end step because we actually need the zones. We'll trigger the effect of the DPE and pass back to our opponent. In standby, we'll bring that bad boy back. They're going to begin with a copy of Eldlich, and ooh, I think we actually have to let that one resolve. It's crusty, but it does send the DPE so we don't get to reanimate. They're going to Foolish for a Water Enchantress. They'll go for their Aramisir afterwards. It's not too big of a deal because we do have the Wandering Griffin Rider, which we can activate when they go for the Fateful Adventure. This will not only negate the effect of the Fateful Adventure, it will destroy it. Big deal. They're going to go to a Link Spider and a Verity. Anaconda 
forcing the Mirror Jade, and we are running low on interaction, but we have just enough for the last starter in their hand, Synet Mining. Good game. So we're back with the deck, and obviously it's good, but I'm shocked to see that it's nowhere near as meta warping as prophesized. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the combos are really, really low investment. Because so many of your resources come from the deck, most of your setups are single cards. Two, your methods of interaction are varied. This is a weakness of a lot of decks in this format. Maybe they put up negates, but they fall to big dudes or towers. This deck has Chimera, Mirror Jade, Draco Back, Omnis, and even Chain Energies. And three, because of Branded in Red, you kind of have an in-archetype out to Artifact Scythe. That's important. And the cons. One, so as pretty much everyone has already figured out, Branded Fusion is a bit of an Ash Magnet. If you don't have access to it, you're basically playing Dama Branded, which is... ass. Two, there are some silly little interactions in the deck that will make it much weaker once people figure out what they're doing. Like, because Branded in Red works the way it does, you can be stopped from Fusion Summoning by Called By, and things of that nature. And three, I just don't feel like the deck is doing too much that any other deck isn't. All in all, the deck is clearly good, and maybe even the best deck, but it's nowhere near the tier 0 super threat we all presumed it would be. <laughs> <laughs> You're close. <laughs> <laughs>